Hello. Can Hello. everyone hear us? Can someone hello. give a reaction if you can? Hello, hello. <clears throat> so, if you can, we are here. Mm. What I've shared here is our notes. If you've registered, you should have it at a, at a, as a link. And we can scroll down to this icebreaker and begin talking a little bit while I try to stop my cat from destroying something on my <laughs> desk. How come the cat is very active? It's just 11.50. <laughs> I guess it just, well, I don't know. Like sometimes it comes earlier in the day. So for anyone new here, my cat often visits during courses especially later in the day as it approaches four o'clock when it's its feeding time. So that's the motivation for staying through the whole time. So if you leave early, you lose cat observation possibilities. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so hi everyone. Um, Have we gotten any indication of audio yet? Um, I checked the a stream and it, it seemed to work at least. Okay, good. Um, but we, if others want to respond to the notes, that's of course a good idea. Yeah. So the next question is our, is our audio balanced? Should we do the standard test? Yep. Okay, me, Simon, and Rico. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. Okay, let us know who might be quieter. How can uh, people let us know? Well, at least the chat so, people could. Yeah, so you can write it in the notes here. Let me open that up. Um, oh, yeah, actually, some ways writing. I'm the loudest. So, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn myself a bit up or, or just shout a bit loud. Okay. Oh. So anyway, some people have already figured out how notes and stuff works. So basically we have this document everyone can write. And as we're talking at any time, you can write questions or comments. One of the co-instructors might see it, but we also have a whole bunch of people in the background who will be reading and answering during the course. So you can ask as many questions as you want. And usually we get most of them answered. And as a practice, we have icebreakers here. So please open it up um, if you're registered. If not, registering will get you the link automatically emailed to you. Yeah. And then um, scroll down to these sections. So what's your position? Use this O symbol to vote. So as you see, people are adding different votes here. It's like a dynamically generated bar graph that's a poll. So um, yeah, add in your votes there. Um, then you can also add in um, where, where you are now. So as in what city or country you're in. Um, or you can try to be more clever if you want to. No, no, no. Stay here. Uh, what's the biggest computer you've used so far? Um, yeah, I mean, it could be your own computer or some workstation. And then what do you work on? Um, yeah, so like what kind of a scientific work or other work, like basically why you're here. So we want to know a little bit about you. And maybe we can start by telling about us some. So I'm Richard Darst. I'm a, well, HR considers me a staff scientist at Aalto University. I work in the computing 
um, the high performance computing team at Alto. And we also do a lot of teaching and then a lot of um, research software engineer support. So basically going and helping you with your very code. And I'm really glad to be here. So this is one of our best and most important courses of the year. And we're glad that we have several hundred registrations here. Uh, Simo, do you want to tell a little bit about you? Yes, so my name is Simo Tuomisto. I'm a research software engineer in Alto Scientific Computing. Previously worked on the HPC side uh, uh, of the team as well. Uh, yeah, and I've been teaching this course for many years now in conjunction with other people. And yeah, I think it's it's very good. But we try to make this course as uh, palatable for people uh, that are new to HPC so that they don't get scared and uh, people can can do their research in the best way possible. So I'm very happy to be here and see what we can yeah. uh, achieve together during the few days. Yeah. Okay, and Enrico. And then it's me, which most likely you see my name in your mailbox. So I've been coordinating this adventure as well as many other that we have had and we will have in the in the future. So in general, we are organizing these type of open courses. I don't know if this is the first time that you attend a course on Twitch TV. For us, it's always exciting, even though we've been doing this for what, <laughs> two years now? Two years. Or is it three yeah. years? Yeah, maybe three the years. First in 2021, January. Yeah, anyway. And we hope even actually that this way of teaching is inspiring in a way that, you know, maybe next time, you want to join us for for some broadcasting together to talk about your your research or how you solve some problems that could be helpful for others too. So, <clears throat> what's I would the want time? to quickly mention that not that we mentioned Twitch, uh, one uh, quality of life thing for the Twitch stream. Uh, I would highly recommend that everybody goes in the Twitch stream and then checks the gear icon on the bottom right and sets it instead of auto uh, into the best uh, possible resolution because Twitch tries to like, yeah, modify the bandwidth or, or which compression it, it uses in the stream. So if you want to see the crisp, clear text that we are streaming, then uh, setting it to the best possible resolution is, is a good idea. Is this new? So I thought at one point Twitch didn't do transcoding for free streams. Um, I think it does for all streams. Yeah. yeah, it does okay. like, like last time. Like for bandwidth performance. Yeah, exactly. Like if... Yeah. So from the gear icon, from the settings, you can check the quality. And if you set it to be the source quality, you will get the, the best. Uh, view of the uh -huh. of the material. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my next question: What's the coolest thing about today that people should look forward to? Let's go backwards, Enrico. Well, I'm gonna briefly talk about Code Refinery, which is a six days workshop, but we I will try to compress it in twenty minutes just to give them motivation for people to take it next time we run it. So at least that's the most exciting thing that I will talk about today. But what about you, Simo? Um, well, I would say the most uh, interesting part for me is like new demos that we have planned for this year. Uh, so new demos on on uh, on how to run few software uh, for softwares in the cluster, and hopefully they will demonstrate what sort of capabilities the computing cluster can have. Yeah. But also, I would say that I always uh, enjoy listening to our guest talk and the guest people uh, who come and discuss about how they how they do their SPC work and how how they ended up in the computer like in the field of doing computations uh, with well scientific computations. Yeah, because that's that's something new every year for me. Yeah. yeah. And same for me. I mean, it's easy to get courses and 
read about technical things, but the way we've added this interview with how people actually find their careers in these fields, I think can be, is a, is a story that is really often not told. But with that being said, it's almost time to get started. So I switch to my screen for the intro? Yep. Okay, so we've got 10 minutes.